Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to start up the Raman microscope. So you first start off by just powering on the computer because usually the computer's fully shut down. Um, and then the next step is to turn on these lasers. Usually you want to try to turn them on like 20 minutes beforehand because they take a second to warm up. So for this back laser, you just turn this key upright. And then for this laser, turn this on. And then for the computer, there's no password. So just hit enter and it'll log in. Um, and then the software we'll be using is this wire 5.5. But before you open that, you actually have to turn on the microscope. So there's just a switch back here, this like power switch right here. So just pop that on and then should be good to open up the software. And then we'll go over to here and go to wire 5.5 is the program that we're going to use to work the ROM on. So, and to open this up, the microscope has to be on. So even if you're not using the microscope, you still have to have it on to like go in here and like get data and stuff like that. So this window will pop up when you first open it. You're always going to select reference all motors and then hit OK. And then usually this takes a bit to load. So you just got to be patient for a couple of minutes while this boots up. So then once the program finally opens up, you're going to go to view right here. And then you're going to make sure that these three um, options are open. So navigator window, window, live video, and sample review. So these just toggle on and off. So this is what it would look like if they're all off. So once you open it, pop all three of these on. Um, the more familiar you get like using this, um, the more you'll kind of realize which ones you actually need to use. So you don't necessarily have to have all these open to get it to work. So you'll kind of figure out like what's useful to you and what's not really going to be used depending on what you're doing. And then so right as you turn it on, you want to make sure it's calibrated. So you're going to go up to measurement and click open measurement template. And then we'll start by calibrating the 523 laser. So we're going to click on this and then hit OK. And so now it's like loaded the parameters to run the calibration and then to start it we'll go over here to this button that says run and then once you click this it'll turn gray and when it's gray it means it's like actively running the parameters that you set it to so once it's done we'll get like some sort of spectra right here in this this window and um, this will turn blue again meaning that you can run a, a new experiment so this is like just essentially testing the laser on like silica as like a calibration at the start. So usually this should be within like 0.5 of, I think it's 520.471. It should be on the sheet uh, right next to the computer. So yeah, this is like 521, so we're good. So we don't need to do any calibration. So we'll close this out, and then now we'll calibrate the other laser. So same thing, go to measurement, open measurement template, and then we'll go over to here to the 785 um, laser. And so after you open that, same thing, it'll pop up. It's not going to run until you tell it to run. So you go back up here, hit the run button, and then you'll kind of hear the, the microscope clicking around and doing the uh, measurement. And then we'll get kind of the same thing. So hopefully we'll have a peak somewhere around like the, the 520.4 mark. Sweet. Yeah, so it gave us 520, which is close enough. So if like hypothetically this is like, I don't know, 522 or something that's outside that 0.5 parameter. You can go to tools, do a quick calibration. So you go through here, go to calibration, and then just click quick calibration. And that'll kind of run through. And you don't need to hit play for that. It'll just do this pre-programmed quick calibration. And that'll give you this alert that's like um, calibrated. And that's pretty much all the calibration that you'll probably end up doing. So I think the more in-depth calibration, you have to like adjust the lenses within the microscope. So. I think any of that stuff is kind of outside the scope of like any calibrations we would do. So once you've turned on your microscope and you've had the lasers warm up and you've gone through on the computer and done like all the calibrations and you're ready to look at your sample, this is how you uh, load a sample in. So earlier, um, when we turned on the lasers, these two bottom lights were on, on this back laser and not the top light. So we have to wait for the top light to be on right here. And so if this top light's on and then this bottom left light are on, that means this laser is ready to go. Um, sometimes the bottom two will be on and that means that there's like a shutter that's kind of closed the laser from hitting the samples and that'll cause it to not really give good, good readings and usually that's triggered by this door. There's like a sensor that um, detects this door is open or not to protect the laser from coming out and like hitting you in the eyes. So if this doesn't come on like the top light that means it's not going to give you good readings so you can just turn it off using the key and then return it on. Usually I kind of open and close the door a few times to try to like reset the the fail safe on there and you can also like play with turning on and off the microscope to reset that.
But um, yeah, so these are good to go because we've got the top light and bottom left light. And then on this laser, both the lights are on, so we're good to go. So to load the sample, you hit this door release button. You'll, you'll hear a click and then this just slides open. And then so we have a stage down in here and a few different objectives. So I'll kind of pull out the stage. And so this is the sample we're gonna be analyzing. So I put it on like a, a glass slide because you need to have a slide for it to have something to sit on as we analyze it. So in order to put this in, you just rest on here and then there's this little like clamp. Pull that back, put the slide in place, let this clamp come back, and then you can kind of push this around. So you can see where the light is, like the light of the microscope, so that's what's gonna be like under your objective. So I usually align that, and then you can either use these dials and like focus it like a normal microscope, but I usually like to use the computer. So close this back up, and then come over here, and then to do adjustments on the computer, you use this thing. And then so moving this ball around changes where you are on the stage. You can see this screen is like, it's hard to see, but I have a screen recording that'll make it easier to see later. But so this ball kind of moves around the stage and then this ring will change, like as you twist this, it'll change like the focus of the microscope. And so if you're trying to make really big changes, you use this one, finer changes this one, even finer this one, and then super fine changes this one. So on the small one, it'll like barely move around versus the big one, it'll like really bounce around. So usually just set the focus with this. And usually since we started on the 5X objective, I'll like set a good focus using this wheel. And I'm like, okay, that's like a good spot where we want it to be. And then I'll go back here, reopen the door, and then flip this um, objective background to the 20X without touching the stage. So if you touch the stage, you'll kind of move it around and then you'll be focused on a different spot. So we have it on the 20X. Close the door, same thing, use this, and then refocus, and then you can take a spectra of your sample. So once you've loaded your sample on the stage, um, you can kind of look around and find what you want to analyze with the microscope. So in order to do this, sometimes the camera will be off, so sometimes you'll have like no video data. So you click on this little button right here, it says view the sample under the video and this will turn on this little eyepiece so you don't have to do any like the manual focusing with the, the door open to the microscope. So um, some things that are good to kind of play with here is like the lamp intensity. So in this particular sample it's a crystal so if we have like all the way down it's kind of hard to see and you can play with this. And so for this I'm just going to try to find a good focus where it's like a clear picture maybe add some more intensity to like the light bulb. Um, and right now I'm using the 5, so it's usually easiest to kind of start on like the smallest magnification and find what you want to look at and then get it like in focus. So this looks pretty good. This is kind of the side of the crystal that we want. So then now I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to open up the door and then I'm just going to not touch anything but just switch from the 5 to the 20. So if you don't touch anything, it should be more or less in the same exact spot. So it's a little blur blurry, so I'm just going to change the focus on this a little bit, but it should be on the same crystal. Yeah, so we got the kind of same crystal, just more magnified. And I'm just using the toggle uh, keyboard to refocus this. So now that I have the part of the sample that I want to analyze, I'm going to go to New, and then Spectral Acquisition. And then from here, you kind of enter the parameters that you want to look at. So our sample specifically has like a higher and frequency that we're trying to look at because there's some published data on what we're trying to analyze. So by changing the middle number, it'll change like these upper and lower parameters. So this is the range that we're looking at. We're looking at like it's just in like the 1500 area. So since the low and high uh, contain 1500, then we're all good there. And so we'll use the 785 laser and then we'll go to acquisition. And then so in the next window, you can change the laser power. So usually you don't want to do 100 because 100 can burn your sample because it's like shining a really intense laser on your sample. So the rule of thumb is to kind of start at a lower laser power and then kind of work your way up. So we've been doing 10 and that's been working fine. It's been giving us like clear data. Um, and then for the accumulations, uh, the higher you go, the more like intense and like larger your peaks will be and the more like uh, smooth and kind of easy to interpret they'll be. And then I usually go down here and click minimize laser exposure time, and I think that just prevents it from burning the crystal. But I'm not super familiar with what all of these metrics mean, so 
these are definitely like the parameters you can play out, play around with when you're analyzing your sample, kind of depending on what you need to get out of it. And then you go to file, and then just pick how you want to save your file. So like, I'll just save it in this one. And then hit open, and then from here you hit OK. So now it's not going to do anything, but you've loaded like your parameters that you want to run. And so I usually kind of minimize this window because I don't really use it. But this is going to be the spectrum that's going to pop up like after we hit run. So I'm going to go up here to the same button that we used for the calibration and then press run. And so once that turns gray, you'll kind of hear the microscope going. And that's a sign that it's started its measurement. And uh, it usually will take a bit depending on like what parameters you put in. It can take quite a bit of time. But down here, these like three or these two bars indicate how like far into the like the measurement it is. So it's almost about like halfway down here, and you can see the peaks changing as it um, scans through and does more accumulations. They get like smoother and kind of more intense. So we'll give this a second to finish up. So now that it's done, you can look at this data and analyze it. So like for us, it's peak numbers are more important. So we usually right click and go to tools and then go to peak pick and it'll tell you each value of like the peaks. So this would complete this measurement since it's already saved, we can close out of this. And then if we want to do another one, so the like the objective is now closed, you would be able to see anything. So you go up to here and click on this little video thing and it'll reopen the um, the objective so you scroll around again and look for look for more samples to analyze. So you kind of move it around, pick a different spot, um, reload the measurement parameters. Um, if you don't have this sample review bar open, you just go up to view and it was those first three windows right here that we opened at the very beginning. Um, another thing to look out for is if you're switching around objectives, so initially we're using the 5x, if we took a measurement there you'd have to change this to 5x because this won't automatically change as you um, cycle through. But now I haven't changed it so we're still in 20x, so if I were to take another measurement we'd keep it at um, 20x. Um, that's pretty much the most basic way to use this. There's a lot of other things you can do on this microscope that I've not figured out yet. But yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Um, so in terms of turning all this stuff off and putting it back to normal, I don't think there's really like a specific order that matters. So pretty much just go back and reverse the steps that you did. So close this off. And then you can go back to these lasers, turn lasers off. And it's also, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but it's kind of important to not like bump into the machine super hard. So there's a stool right here if you need it to kind of reach back around without like leaning on the, the microscope itself. And then back here, same switch we use to turn it on, flip that off, and then come back to the computer and then just power off the computer and then you're good to go.